Hello and welcome to another edition of Attract Well Office Hours. I'm Coach Ashley and today we're going to talk about how you can turn your personal development journey into profit. So uh, welcome, head over into the chat. If you're here live with us, let me know where in the world you're coming in from and let me know your favorite place to dig into research. What is your uh, your favorite topic that you like to pursue? Uh, I believe that everyone here would fall into the category of learner, researcher, lifelong learner, person who's interested in personal development. I don't think we that I don't think that we find our way to this path collectively, uh, where we are trying to make a mark on the world, uh, make the world a better place through typically impacting people, right? Uh, so if that is what you do, you are going to love what we're talking about here today. Uh, and this is twofold. Number one, obviously you have a business, you wanna be more profitable. But number two, and this is really important, the algorithms have become so good at sucking us in, uh, whether that be the uh, the search algorithms uh, with, um, with search engines uh, and, and the way that you can follow data down that path, uh, and especially if you're somebody who's on social media, it can become a little challenging to really define these very blurry lines between engaging in personal development and seeking out content that grows you personally and professionally and falling into a content consumption rabbit hole that doesn't necessarily uh, come out on the other side uh, with, uh, you know, with profit uh, or really just purpose and, and, and something to do with what you've spent your time on, right? Uh, so welcome. We're excited to have you here today. And, uh, and and again, head into the chat and uh, let me know where you are in the world. If you're watching this on YouTube as a replay or you're watching this streaming into our Facebook group, you can join us on an upcoming live call. Uh, we are live every Thursday at 2 p.m. U.S. Eastern time. Now, I do have some slides that I've prepared for you today. Uh, welcome. Uh, and let's see, uh, Jeanette, your question here. Uh, this is actually... Um, yeah, so uh, this is a call that is uh, meant to be like a group work session. So there's typically some training here. And then I do have the ability to actually get into your account and work through some things with you if you want to do that here uh, in, in our group setting here today. If you are looking for someone to work with you one on one and you want to actually invest in, in that you know sort of time and hands on with somebody dedicated to you, you can go to attractwell.com slash concierge and you can actually get a um you know, you can get anything from one-on-ones uh, with folks who know the system well, all the way through to having things done for you. Uh, but I hope that you'll find uh, what you're looking for here on today's call. I'm certainly happy to help you after we get through our training today. Hello, Tampa, Vermont, California, Savannah, North Carolina. I'm happy to be back in New York City. Hello, Austin. Excited to have you guys here. What's up, ATL? <laughs> I was just there and you know that because you were on last week. Awesome. So uh, we're going to get into this today. And uh, I'm really excited to talk about this topic. Uh, and of course, uh, to chat with you guys about uh, some of your favorite ways to navigate uh, this space and, uh, and these outcomes that we're looking for. So I'm going to head out a video now and get into some of these slides that I've prepared for you today. Here we go. And do please, if you have questions, uh, make sure you pop those into the Q&A so I don't miss anything that's coming from you guys. It is just me on the call today. So uh, again, welcome. Today we're going to talk about how we turn our personal and professional growth into new leads and sales for your business. This is for the learners and researchers out there. So we're going to talk about the ILT method for turning research into revenue. We'll get into some best practices as well as some of my favorite tools. And I'd love to chat with you about yours as well. Uh, and then of course, as always, we have space for live help, Q and A. If you're just getting started, if you're stuck on something, you want feedback on your work, these are all things that are possible if we can fit them into this hour. And I do have two folks signed up for a uh, live work review. So I got space for you guys today. And then of course, we'll make space for as many other people as we possibly can. So if you'd like to join us on a live call like this one, again, if you're watching this as a replay, head over here, attractwell.com slash office hours every Thursday at 2 p.m. U.S. Eastern time. If you would like to work together, as a couple of people have signed up to do today here on this call, attractwell.com slash work review. This typically takes place 
at the end of our training, which is about halfway through, so about 30 minutes into the hour. And then finally, if you would like for someone to do work for you or with you in a dedicated sense, you want to hire someone on our team to work with you, you can go to attractwell.com slash concierge to learn more about our team, some of the projects that they've worked on, and then of course, request a call and a quote where you can work together with our team to come up with a solution to exactly what you want. All right, so let me know in the chat, do you love to research? I assume if you're here today, then you probably do. Uh, there's probably one or maybe five or 20 things that you just really love learning about. What is that for you? Pop that into the chat. Would love to hear what that is for you. I have had an itch to learn everything that I can about human potential and the achievement of that, typically through the lens of wellness in the body uh, and how that extends to the rest of the being. I'm someone who was fortunate enough to grow up around uh, some really awesome people in the holistic space that kind of uh, tripped that wire for me very early on. And so everything that has to do with supporting the body's innate ability uh, to thrive is something that I love to learn. So what does that look like for you? What's your favorite? Uh, Misha has been a researcher since you were a teenager, science, health, etc. Mark misses writing, <laughs> writing papers. Yeah, I kind of do too. I kind of do too. But that I hope means Mark that you're writing blog posts. <laughs> so yeah, keep it coming. Came from a medical family, always been drawn to holistic treatments and living, best practices for health and wellness, reducing stress, inflammation, fantastic. Transforming, transforming negative limiting beliefs into healthy boundaries. I love that one. Oh, that's good. Fantastic. So everybody's kind of got their thing that they love. Uh, and so those were those are probably what you would maybe call your favorite rabbit holes, right? So um, if you've ever found yourself uh, scrolling or uh, Googling or something like that, and 45 minutes, an hour, or maybe more later, <laughs> suddenly you wondered where you spent all your time, but you loved every minute of it because you're exploring and learning new things, right? All right. So we, we know that these rabbit holes exist. So on the one hand, right, this is a great thing. Uh, and this is, this it, it's a double-edged sword, right? Um, this, this phenomenon of loving to know things. Double-edged sword has two points. On the one side, we can grow in our authority, right? Like we can be better uh, at communicating ideas. We can be more knowledgeable generally. We can be more effective at what we do. But on the other hand, when you find these rabbit holes or when you set out to maybe learn something new, you can lose all productivity, right? And honestly, the algorithms are so sophisticated, uh, whether it be search or uh, or whether it be social, uh, that they are literally designed to keep you there and to keep you scrolling and to keep you clicking and to keep you consuming because that's what they make money off of, right? All of these platforms, the majority of what's on the internet is built psychologically to incentivize you staying there and going deeper down the hole. Now, while that can be fulfilling and, and it's extraordinary, especially for those of us who remember uh, what it used to look like to have to go to a library to learn something, right? It's extraordinary that you don't even have to get out of bed and you can learn um, you know, things that would have normally taken many hurdles to jump over. Uh, but in the process, of course, uh, we are, you know, fighting against these phenomena that aren't necessarily healthy, but they're profitable for, you know, the, the big companies that own these platforms. So anyway, um, when we look at our time spent learning and growing ourselves, it is really important if you aren't doing this already, and I think everyone here probably looks at yourself this way, but looking at learning, looking at researching, looking at, um, at growing yourself as an investment, right? <clears throat> so just like if you were to purchase a property to flip, uh, you are very likely going to want to make some improvements before you do. And for you in business, whether you are a coach, a consultant, uh, you are a course creator, you offer services, at the end of the day, you, baseline, base level, you are your product. You are very likely here today a personal brand, right? Or you're a brand of a small business and you are the product. People say yes to what you do because of you right? And so that you needs to be in tip top shape, that you needs to be on top of the game. So it makes sense to invest time and money to improve yourself if you ultimately are the product or the means of creating it, right? 
So there's a three-step formula. I learned this ages ago, very, very early on, and you've probably heard this before, uh, and it bears repeating. And for those of you who haven't learned this yet, welcome. This is going to change the way you spend your time and the way you look at yourself and your journey. Um, everything can become productive if you look at how you spend your time through this lens, the ILT formula. So first, invest. This means literally invest money into well-qualified resources. This could be coaching programs. This could be books. Uh, this could be courses. It could be a structured, you know, certification like education. It could be literally going to college, whatever that looks like for you. Investing your money into well-qualified resources in the direction of what you and your business needs to be able to know and communicate, right? You also, of course, need to invest your time in order to learn. You aren't just consuming information. You got to do something with it. So we want to invest our time into well-structured learning sessions. So again, not just consuming educational content, right? Not Netflixing, binging, <laughs> right? Uh, but but on being intentional and uh, and having actual dedicated sessions to the time and money that you are investing in to grow. All right, now uh, the second uh, part of the ILT formula is learn, and that is the active intentional practice of taking in information that matters to your brand and business inside of one of these well-structured learning sessions. And then importantly, and this is part of what creates their structure, uh, is that you aren't just consuming. You aren't just watching YouTube videos or listening to an audiobook or a podcast uh, or sitting down and attending a class. You are cataloging and documenting what you're learning. You're taking good notes. And for any of us who have been in higher education or even in high school, and hopefully they still do this in high school, uh, you have conducted basic research, learned how to, you know, find sources and write a research paper, for instance. I believe we've all done that if we're here. Um, we want to essentially treat our time spent ingesting, consuming this information. Uh, we want to treat that as we would if we were doing actual academic research, right? So citing your sources, collecting that source material, and keeping that filed away for later use. Because the third part of the ILT formula is teach. This is where you actually turn the time spent growing yourself into something that is productive and profitable for you and, of course, for your business. So what we're going to do first is use what we've learned to create content. If we think about where we stand, and for the majority of us, and I, I believe this is probably 99% of us here on this call, we are very likely showing someone, our future customer or client, we're showing them how to get a result that we've already gotten, right? So if, if the journey is 10,000 steps, you are at least three to 500 steps along, right? And you still have further to go. They, people you want to serve, have either not started, like the majority of them are at step one, or they're somewhere between step one and step 12. So there's a lot of room for you to grow and continue serving people. And there is way more room than you think for you to turn around and take what you learned today, yesterday, six weeks ago, if you documented it well, and turn that into something that can serve someone who isn't as far along on the journey as you are, right? So we need to be and if you've been around the training that I've been doing here on this channel for any length of time, um, you need to be creating long form content and releasing that on a weekly basis. This is something that's going to boost your visibility. Uh, this is going to boost your credibility and authority, and it's going to increase the value and quantity of leads and opportunities that show up for your business. So that's a blog post. That's a um uh, a YouTube video of greater than, you know, five minutes in length. It's a podcast episode, right? We need to release one of those three things on a weekly basis. And a lot of us just kind of get stuck wondering, well, what on earth am I going to talk about? Well, we probably engage in some degree of personal development regularly, right? So why not take that thing that you just consumed while it's fresh in your mind and go ahead and outline what a blog post on that would look like, right? 
just as an example. And so this is something that doesn't create profit right away, but it is 100% uh, something that creates a snowball in the direction of the profit and the, imp uh, the impact that you ultimately want to create. And then finally, in a very literal sense, you can turn around and teach what you've learned right? To sell your content, your coaching, your services, your courses, et cetera, right? So if you learn something and you put it to use or you put it to use with a client and there is a result, you can go back and say, here are the steps, here's the course or program, right? And the number one thing I think that stands in the way of us making this connection and doing this thing, following the ILT formula on a regular basis is imposter syndrome. It's it's being invaded with the idea that, oh, somebody else said it, or who am I to say this, right? And I just want you to pause if that is something that you face, if that's something that is standing in your way or has in the past, remember this. There really isn't much new under the sun, but chances are what you've learned from who you learned from is one of thousands, perhaps, who's saying that exact same thing. And you listen to that person. And that same phenomenon is going to work for you and the people that you are meant to serve, right? What we're doing is really taking what it is that we know, and we're delivering it in a contextual way and a voice that someone really likes to hear. And there are people out there who really like to hear or will really like to hear your voice, your take, your perspective on the things that matter to them that also happen to matter to you. Now let's talk about best practices for uh, ILT and just generally engaging in personal growth and development as somebody who really has a prerogative to create some amount of content and of course sell information for their business. So our best practices are first to get clear on our information silos. Now message mapping is something that uh, that I've taught. Uh, I'll show you here in just a bit where you can go and find that inside of Attractwell. Uh, we do actually have a course that, um, that covers this to some degree at the very least, uh, but I call this message mapping or map your message. And essentially what you're doing is you're creating an outline where you're determining what your top level categories are. So silos, they're tall and they hold a particular kind of grain, right? Like there's a corn farm and there is corn in that silo. Um, I, I don't know much about farming. I can't tell you about all the other things that would be in other silos. But essentially you have a tall structure uh, that can have many, 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 many pieces of a specific type of thing inside of it. And so you want to decide what those are. So maybe your um, your information silos for your business are going to represent maybe some of the top interests of, and priorities of you and perhaps uh, the folks who follow you. So maybe you talk about, um, about time management, you talk about sleep, and you talk about, um, about diet and specifically a, you know, kind of macro uh, focused diet because you're a wellness coach and those are the, the areas that you like to focus on because you are working with, uh, with busy people who struggle to, um, to, to get it all done, right? So once you know those are sort of the top three or four uh, sort of silos, you know where everything else can fit underneath it. So if you find something that's very interesting when you're scrolling uh, or when you're reading a news article or you're at a conference or what have you, you know, oh, hey, yeah, that fits under category two. And I can potentially write a blog post about that in the future or release a, um, a podcast or even just create a social media post or send out an email to your list, right? So get clear on what your sort of umbrellas or silos are that everything falls under in your business where topics of information are concerned. Then when you are engaging in any kind of consumption of learning personal development material, document your source material, just like you would have with a research paper. If it's a book, there's a title, there's the author, there's the page. Maybe you uh, are copying and pasting the passage, right? Maybe there is an infographic uh, or, or a PDF or something like that that came from that source material. Put that in there too. Gather this material so that you have it in a place where you can find it in the future. And I'll talk about how I like to store these things here in just a bit, uh, but document that source material. Don't allow your consumption of a great idea to end at the fact that you consumed it. 
allow it to end with you doing something with it, right? Something that grows you and hopefully maybe something that increases your impact and eventually, of course, your income. Another thing that is really helpful to do is to really start examining the sources for the content that you find useful, right? Success leaves clues, and there is no such thing as a PhD in what we do, where we're talking about putting ourselves out there as personal brands online to attract uh, our ideal people utilizing these, um, these algorithms uh, and search engines, et cetera, right? This is something that's ever evolving, and that means that success leaves clues. There are people who are out there leading meaningful conversations that you are impacted by, that you're attracted to, and that may even convert you into a lead or sale of something that they are offering, right? You want to not just examine the material that they are offering you, but if they are in alignment with what you do, you want to examine everything that they're doing, right? This is where you can start to get some, some ideas about you know, the pros and cons of ways that you can set up your website, maybe something a little bit more optimal. Don't just look at this as here is the thing that they have. Look at this as who are they and what are they doing? Because what they're doing worked on me, right? And maybe there's something there that I can learn from, uh, kind of taking a step back from just being a consumer and looking at this critically as someone who is or is aspiring to be a creator. Because that's the goal of Invest, Learn, Teach, is for us to step out of just being consumers of content and to become creators of content. We also want to make sure, and again, this is keeping the algorithms in mind because they are designed to keep you there in perpetuity, set strict time parameters for yourself. Schedule blocking, time blocking is my absolute favorite way to do this. If you aren't doing it already, please start doing that. Make a resolution to do that in 2024, okay? <laughs> uh, set time aside to where you know that this is your deep work period of space that you have uh, during the week. Um, this is when you take calls. And then of course, inside of your deep work or another designated space, you maybe give yourself a block of time, maybe 45 minutes or so on uh, to, uh, to not just taking in the content, but taking good notes on that content so that you can use it well later. And then finally, you want to keep all your notes in one place. It's really, really important. Um, I love doing this digitally for the main reason that I remember what my computer looked like and my desk looked like with sticky notes everywhere. And, uh, and it just wasn't effective. Uh, those ideas were lost to time. And even keeping a journal, like a book, a physical book, and I understand some of us are really pen to paper people, I still have ideas that nothing was ever done with in books from 10 years ago. But everything that's put into the notes that I use digitally, all I have to do is type in a keyword and I can find something that I wrote eight years ago, right? So keep your notes digitally and try to keep them in one place. So let's talk about favorite tools. And this includes where you keep your notes. It's actually the majority of this is me telling you favorite places to keep your notes. So uh, first, begin with the map your message outline. Absolutely begin this process by determining what the silo structure looks like. These are my primary silos, and then these are some of the potential subtopics, and then, of course, breaking that down further. There's no wrong way to do this aside from uh, writing paragraphs for bullets. You want to keep them you know, kind of short and concise, uh, the topic level stuff. Uh, and, uh, and so start here because this is going to allow your brain to be organized and it's going to allow your note taking to be organized in a way that allows for expansion into the future, right? And this is another reason why it's important that this is done digitally. Um, this needs to be something that you can continually add to whenever you find something that is new or interesting, you can locate something that maybe you have considered before and update that, uh, give it context and so on. Now, I am uh, a, an avid user of the Apple ecosystem. I can't personally speak to how this works on Android and other devices, uh, but there's a notes app and I'm sure, I'm absolutely positive, there are solutions that are just like this for non-Apple users. Uh, but there's a notes app that I have that is native to Apple devices that if I put a note on my phone, that same note will be on my desktop, it'll be on my laptop, it'll be on my iPad, right? And I can use that everywhere. And importantly, if I go to my notes app, I can search for a word and it'll show me everywhere that it shows up, right? 
really, really cool. So even if you're not great at organizing your thoughts, you have that search feature that's going to save your life when you're trying to find that thing that you know you wrote down, but you don't remember exactly where you put it, under what category, et cetera. The notes app I also love as well because you can put more than just words in it. So you you have uh, whatever you type, maybe copy paste, you have a URL in there, but then if you wanna drag an image, and put that in there, maybe an infographic or something like that. Uh, that might be something that you choose to use uh, as inspiration for a future social post, right? Uh, then that will be there in the same place. Another thing, and this I believe is available on all types of devices, Notability is the best at this. Uh, this is something that I learned about from a speaker group I was a part of a while back. It is It was originally an iPad app, but they have desktop and mobile versions of it. And it too allows you to, um, you can even use like the like a pen or stylus uh, on, on a tablet and handwrite and have it turn into uh, text. Uh, you can, you know, drag it around, make it look nice. A lot of college students use it. Uh, you can do really cool stuff, artsy stuff, uh, but you can also just have an ever growing container for maybe a specific silo if you wanted to. And again, if it is, if it's in text format, uh, the content in there is also searchable, just like in the notes app. Workflowy, if you like outlines, this was really, uh, the, the tip of the iceberg for me. This is where the, uh, where everything began uh, was with Workflowy. I wanted something that was a little bit more rich than a standard word processor outline, which is a great way to start your message mapping, but Workflowy allows you to compress and expand different parts of an outline. And it's it's really awesome. Uh, and so it's basically everything that you want inside of an outline. All of these things that I've mentioned here, the Notes app is free if you have an Apple device. Uh, Notability and Workflowy both have free versions. Uh, and um, I use the paid version uh, of both of these, as well as Trello. Um, Trello is a Kanban board. If you're not familiar with it, it's definitely a cool thing to check out. They have a free version. Uh, you can do an entire board on your um on your sort of uh, data collecting for different notes, uh, where maybe, for instance, you have a uh, you have a list on your board uh, that is a particular silo, and then you have for each subject under that silo, you can have a card where you can embed video, files, uh, put text. If you have a team, you can have conversation here. You can give yourself to dos if you want to turn it into a blog post, etc. Uh, so that's uh, it takes you out of just a place to collect your research and uh, actually kind of merges it into something that you can use to manage uh, your content release systems. And then finally, this is not where you keep your information, but more uh, effectively how you can better structure the way you go about conducting your research. So, and I love this uh, in particular because uh, you you have a, one could argue objective, semi-objective, <laughs> it, is, it is AI and it's not 100% accurate, but we're not asking it to do the research for us in this case. You have a source that allows you to maybe break down a plan. So let's just say, for instance, you really want to learn about, um, I'll just say yoga, right? So you are thinking about becoming a yoga instructor on top of the wellness coaching that you do. Uh, you know that you'll probably, you know, you'll need to go to, you know, actual certification for that, invest in that. But you really want to learn the um, the eight limbs of yoga. And you want to make sure that you fit that into the amount of time that you know that you have available. So you can actually go to chat GPT and say, I want to learn about the eight limbs of yoga in detail, create a structured lesson plan for me that includes reading uh, and uh, and specific exercises that I can complete in an hour a day for eight weeks. You could tell that to chat GPT and it will spit out a lesson plan for you. I love it. So um, I personally love using it for, uh, for that purpose. Um, obviously, if you're creating um, something with the intention of publishing it, then we have our Write with AI feature in Attractwell. Uh, but ChatGPT, you're able to have more of a dialogue with. So if it didn't, if you didn't love the feedback that it gave you, you can reference it and uh, kind of have more of a conversation there. Uh, Google Keep is one that I see here uh, in the chat. Uh, which is great. A tip for the notes app, you could use the voice to text feature using the microphone. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely love that. All right. So let's get into live help and Q&A. If you guys have questions, 
I am excited to go over those with you. And then of course, for those of you who are, um, are here for a live review, I'm here to help you as well. Uh, let me grab these questions in the Q&A and then we will, um, we'll move on to our folks who signed up for live reviews. So Misha says, how much information should I include in each blog post to be very consumable, but leave them wanting more? Great question. So I think that it really depends on the topic. So you don't want to go too broad with uh, with a blog post. You want it to be something that they're probably Googling for. And that's kind of the reverse engineering of the thinking process that you want to engage in as you are deciding before you publish uh, what your, your subject lines are going to be and ultimately what the content of your post will be. So what you would do uh, there is uh, is ask yourself what what is so what is my lead looking for as it pertains to this information? Are they looking for how to? Are they looking for general information? Why are they looking for this information? Is there a problem that they're looking to solve? Right. And so if you can take the thing that you want to teach and then apply some context to it then that can give you an idea of what you wanna do with the blog post. Another final question you would wanna ask yourself is, where do we go from here, right? Because there's a good chance that whatever it is that you're opening the conversation uh, with in the blog post is something that can transition into, and by the way, I have this free thing, right? Here's my download. And then you send them to a landing page. Or by the way, I consult on this here's a link to apply for a call with me, right? Or by the way, I have a community that talks about this, or I do calls or whatever that looks like. Um, you know, you'll want to segue to that. Generally speaking, with any content that you create, and this is any free content that you create. So this is going to be your podcast. It's going to be your, your YouTube videos. It's going to be your blog posts. It's also going to be things like sales videos, webinars, trainings, like things that you teach if you do that, speaking, you want to make sure that you preserve some gap, right? So within the thousand or so words that you would have in a blog post, you wanna give information that's compelling, give them something that they came for. Meaning if you feel like they're coming because they're looking for a way to do something about this right now, you know, giving them a recipe or giving them steps to follow, you always just wanna make sure that at least at the end of it, you are acknowledging. And hey, by the way, I get it. This isn't always easy to figure out on your own. That's why I created this thing that you can take advantage of right now, right? Generally speaking, you're probably not going to give away all of your value in a blog post. There's just no way to do that. There's not enough time and space. Nobody really wants to read more than, you know, 1,000, 1,500 to 2,000 words, usually, unless you are just an academic writer or you're just prolific and able to really keep people uh, roped in with your prose. Um, so yeah, I, I, I think that help them solve the problem. Get like actually deliver on what you promised that got them there. Um, but then expose what's left, remind them that there's more, and then move them over to the thing that you're offering for lead generation. What's the best way to reuse my info, blog, Instagram, Facebook, in a way to draw to draw traffic to my blog? Uh, there's lots of great content out there on spinning content, and we actually do have a previous training on our channel uh, about uh, reusing content. So definitely check that out because I go into some detail with that. Uh, Short answer, put that into write with AI, uh, like basically copy your blog post, put it into write with AI and say, um, come up with copy for five different Facebook posts, right? Or um, there's any number of different ways that you can do that, but definitely check out that additional training. Okay, let's see. Are notes and notability the same purpose? Yes, Sherry, those, those are, um, you don't need both notes and notability. Um, they basically do the same thing. I, I think that notability is, it creates a much more attractive interface. So if you are more of, uh, you know, if, if you're more a visual aesthetic person, uh, then you might enjoy notability a little bit more. But if it's really just about the raw black and white, get it done, keep it in one place, uh, and you're an Apple user, then the notes uh, feature in Apple works great. And then of course, as, as was mentioned, uh, Google Keep, uh, if you are not an Apple user or you just like using the Google Cloud, then that's going to be a good option there too. I think that would do the same thing. Okay, is 500 by 500 the post size for a picture? Carol, could you clarify to me post where? <laughs> where where would that post go? Um, and, uh, and, and what's its purpose? 
okay, for a blog post. So a blog featured image actually has its own, um, its own dimensions that you're going to want to use. Here, let me go log into an account here that we can, hang on just a second. Why did it do that to me? <laughs> sometimes as a super user, oh, I know why it did that. Okay, sometimes when I'm super using, I forget that I'm logged into the wrong kind of account uh, to be able to go and use my shortcut here to log in as the dummy account. Okay. Am I, that's my whole screen, not what we want. There we go. Sorry, perfect. Okay, so um, if we go to, I believe it actually shows up here in your blog posts. Um, that's our content, da, 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 website blog post, here we go. So you can really use any size image you want. I just recommend that you keep it consistent across the board. Uh, but the the image, I think he has, here we go. You see when, when I hover over right here for the featured image? 1200 by 630. Yeah, 1200 by 630, which is also the ideal image size for your, uh, or the resolution size for your, your sharing images on any of your pages or for your site generally. It's also an ideal uh, sharing size for Facebook. So uh, that is, that would be my recommendation and definitely check out the blog trainings uh, that we've done previously on our YouTube channel. There are templates there uh, for, for entire blog posts along with Canva templates that you can use. Uh, and definitely recommend that you use a template in Canva for that and just keep adding uh, for each of your, your blog posts uh, as you need them. Add more images to that same file. That way they're always the same size and you can kind of repeat or replicate uh, the branding that you have on them to keep them um, visually consistent. Okay, so I have today... Uh, Cindy and Debbie signed up for live reviews. Cindy, I believe this is you. I'm going to bring you out to chat. Hi, how can I help today? Hi. Hey. So I don't know if you saw the questions that I sent in. I don't have them right in front of me, but okay. uh, go for it. Okay. Okay. Well, so um, the first one is we had set up an event uh, for a solstice event, one virtual and one in person. And we set up a sales page for it and then uh, autoresponder campaigns. And we had mm -hmm. about five people who registered for each and paid for each one. Well, then unfortunately, the um, facilitator got sick <laughs> mm -hmm. and so we had to cancel them and we sent everybody an email saying um, we're going to reschedule you know something in January and then if you can't come to that in January we're happy to refund your money okay and so now we are want to go in and create you know these new events that we're going to do in January and so yesterday I was, um, I had opened up the, the campaign, one of the campaign emails, you know, that we had done. And it occurred to me that in, so this is the question, do I need to, in order to keep those people that have already paid, can we just uh, change out the content on the sales page and the email campaigns, autoresponders, or do I need to duplicate uh, the campaigns? And if I do that, will the people come along? <laughs> Got you. Okay. Okay. Understood. So you sold to them from a page in Attractwell, right? Yes. Okay. And the delivery, what does fulfillment look like? It's going to be a live workshop with like a Zoom link and stuff like that? Um, Yes, and an in person. There's there's two okay. different ones. Got you. So they're essentially what fulfillment looks like in the attract well system is they're going to be receiving information to where they could go in person and or they receive a Zoom link 
uh, to, to attend virtually, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Perfect. So, uh, that makes this very simple. What you're going to want to do is first go to the page, uh, where this was sold, right? So the page, what was that called? It is called, um, is this one? So, yes, yes. All right. Perfect. So it should be the case that here under settings leads and what to do after a lead registers, everyone who purchased or who signs up on this page has this winter solstice 2023 tag on them in your contacts. Yes. Uh, that should also be the case here. Here we go. Virtual, in-person, beautiful. Okay. So then what you're going to do is uh, for everyone, for all of those people, because this, you know, the, the communication is going to be different um, than, than mm -hmm. would have been previously. What you're going to do is you're going to filter your contacts for that winter solstice 2023, like all of them, the, both the in-person and virtual, right? And you're going to uh -huh. want to remove the existing campaign from them right? Uh, just in case it's something that's currently delivering. And then also just to keep things clean, right? So that campaign that was applied to them previously. And if you had two different campaigns, then you may just filter for the virtual one, the in-person one, just remove those campaigns. Can You're you not show me how to do that? So I will show you an abbreviated version because I like, I, I don't want to like display people's contact information here on the live call. Right. Uh, well, one so of them's me. So you could do me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, I'm, I'm going to go find, let me find that one more time back to leads here. <clears throat> Winter Solstice 2023. So if we get in here and we go to, I'm just going to, I'm going to pull everybody up and then actually pull up the thing that I want you to see uh, okay. really quickly. So I'm going to filter contacts and I will, I'll just, I'll show this part because it's obscured enough. Filter contacts for winter solstice 2023. That's everyone. And you did right? this in the contacts area. That's right. Yeah. You hit okay. that filters button right there. Now I'm going to stop sharing just because, you know, personal information, uh, uh -huh. but then I'll show you. So what you, you have all of those people pulled up, right? And then we're going to click actions and uh -huh. then bulk contact actions. And then this is what it's going to look like. And then you're going to go and find the campaigns and we're going to stop sending. And that's going to be that, um, but both of those campaigns that you had applied when people purchased, right? So first uh -huh. remove those campaigns. Okay. Okay. So that way that's clean. That's done. Then you create and you can actually just duplicate those existing campaigns or you could just modify them. Right. Because you've okay. removed them from these people. So in this case, you don't have to create something entirely new. You can just edit what you have. But we want to okay. go ahead and take it off of them first. Okay. But so it's, then still, you, it's not refunding their money. That's not that's right. Them. All, all okay. we're doing is changing the communication there. Okay. And, and okay. you would be later on, on a case by case basis, working with folks on refunds. Right. So, yeah, there's there's no bulk refund everybody in a track well. There's things right. you can do in Stripe for that, but but not in a track well. So, okay. um, remove the campaigns from everybody, like I just showed you. Okay. And then go to your campaigns and make your modifications. If the dates have changed, of course, the, um, you know, the, the links, anything like that that you want to change in those uh -huh. campaigns, change those campaigns. Right. Okay. And then you're going to follow essentially the same steps that we just used. You're going to filter all of your contacts for just the people who signed up for the winter solstice virtual. Okay. And you're going to apply that updated winter solstice virtual campaign. You're going to then filter for everybody who did the in-person and then apply that edited campaign. So you're just removing what you already did from them, changing it up okay. and then adding it back to the people who need it. Okay. Okay. So when I filter them, um, then I'm going to filter them and then I'm going to apply them to the new thing that I do. Yes. You're going to apply the new campaign, but okay. just for that tagged group, right? So yes. there's two different campaigns. There's two different groups of people. So yeah, I just remove okay. from both edit okay. and then add to both. Okay. And then that just shifts them over. Okay. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And, um, uh, this removing thing may help this other thing that just happened, like literally before I got on the call. Um, I received, because I had signed up, you know, as a testing, mm -hmm. um, an autoresponder email that said, oh, the solstice event is tomorrow. Well, yeah. <laughs> the, the thing is that in my campaign, I had set that to be like 
like 50 days from now, like way off. So I'm not sure why it, it went out and it could just be that it, um, I don't, I don't know. So. Okay. Yeah. You just definitely want to make sure that you stop sending on both of them. And then you may want to just send out a quick, like to everybody who's signed up, you know, Hey, by the way, and, and this is where you would filter for just the winter solstice 2023 uh -huh. people, not the virtual versus the other, uh, you would just send a quick email out and say, Hey, look for an email, you know, from me within the next 24 hours. If you've got one saying it was tomorrow, just here's a recap you know, dates have changed. There's going to be new information coming your way shortly. So if you think that that might've gone out to people uh, incorrectly, mm -hmm. then you may want to just send out a broadcast. Uh, but then of course, before you do that, just remove those, like stop those campaigns from everybody, right. Uh, right. remove them entirely uh, from those folks. Uh, and I think there's also, so you can stop delivery, but then you could also go here to, yeah, re remove would be the uh, stop sending. So you're again in, in contacts right there. That's right. And you're yeah. clicking on stop sending and then you're selecting the two campaigns. It, it's only going to be the one. So this is where you're going to search for the in-person okay. people, right? In your contacts, filter for in-person people. And then you're going to select stop sending and you're going to find the in-person people campaign, remove it, right? Uh -huh. so apply that change. Then you go back to your contacts filter for the virtual people. Same thing, stop sending, okay. find that campaign. And then, and then you're going to do the inverse of that once you've edited your campaigns. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Do we have time for my second question? <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay. So then uh, we are going to be having a three month program that will run February, March, April. And so this involves setting up vaults. And this is the first time I've done all this. And so um, I had been asking the support people like, did I do it right? And so they said, well, come on and talk to Ashley, and she can just walk, review it and make sure I set it all up right. Okay. Cool. So, um, yeah. So these are the, those, there's, and again, there's possibly going to be in person and virtual. So that's why I've got two things there. Okay. I just want to make sure I've done all the steps correctly. And I have two different payment plans. Great. And that's where we'll, we've got to add stuff there. Okay. You know, that's the case. You're going to send them mm -hmm. to the vault when they're done. Fantastic. And then uh, we've got our schedule. Yeah, that's just a place. You haven't holder. done yet. I right. mean, it looks like you're in the right direction for it. I mean, if this is going to be just a series of calls. Yeah. Okay. Now then, um, then what's connected to that is a page. Over this in one? page. Um, no, oh, over in pages. A sales like a sales page. page? Got you. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And it basically... Um, okay, so it's the 2024 three-month sales page. Now, I just used our same solstice image because we don't have like that new image yet. Mm -hmm. But um, now all of this, okay, I had saved, um, I'd actually duplicated the sales page we had used for the solstice event. Okay. When I did this one. Mm -hmm. But um, so we're not using that payment thing that you just were looking at right um but if you scroll down what i did was hook those buttons up to the vault thing so Got you. so you're sending them to the vault checkout page yes so hopefully i don't know if it'll let you um um look and see what that looks like let's see well there's nothing in there yet but that is it's sending them to the correct place okay well, you're yeah. not you're not able to see the payment thing. Uh, well, no, because I'm, uh, okay. so I, basically what you would have to do uh, is um, just open it like a private browser window and go to that link and you'll be able to see what it looks like. Okay. Okay. And then, uh, so then I've got that page that we got to fill in the con and then I've got campaigns over in mm -hmm. the campaigns, um, some autoresponders set up. And, and I want to ask you something about that, um, something on there about the date. Um, okay. Are you able to show me that on screen so I can? Yeah. Okay, over in campaign. So one you of could these do... two, it looks like there's a duplicate yeah. here. Yes, either one. <clears throat> okay, so okay. you see that um, up there with, where it says on a specific date? Mm-hmm. 
Um, I'm, I, I'm a little bit confused by that. Should that date be like the first day that we send out the initial promotional um, email? Okay, so is this going to be as is who is this promoting to? It's going to be promoted to well the people that come to that um, event in January, but then also all of our list. And okay, you know, so this yeah. is this is a, effectively a marketing or sales campaign. Yes. So so what you would want to do is uh, this is going to the date that you put here needs to be the day before the day one message. Right. So if you know that you want to begin sending your messages in February, right, uh -huh. uh, then you would because here, here we can go and add a message uh, and uh, we'll say this will be. We'll just call it February promo email one. And I could have actually put that on day one here, but I didn't. Uh, so you can actually see that that's going to send on February 9th. Uh -huh. So okay. whenever you know that you want the email sequence to actually start, uh, have this be the day before. <clears throat> and then, of course, this day zero, that's going to be immediately when you apply the campaign to the contacts. So what I like, like to do when someone a, buys. But you said this is going to go to your whole list, though. Yes, yes. Yeah. So we we don't want to tell them they're in if this if the content of this series is going to um be right. telling them to buy, right? So this is this is what you would want to have um, connected to your vault, um, and oh. yeah, because that's at the point of purchase, right? Or you could have yes. it attached to the point of purchase otherwise. Uh, but um, but yeah, that that would that would be what you use to um, this campaign you would use to promote. You're going to be applying it to your whole list. Uh, and this campaign needs to be removed from people, you know, once they they purchase at the vault level. Okay. Um I so I think I do have maybe a um an auto no an automation that tells them to get that email when they sign up but wherever in the if I was going to set it up in the vault where would I do that? Yeah, so <clears throat> there's two places in the vault where you're going to connect. So this one we were just what we were looking at just now is for your promotion. So it's before people have access to the vault because it's okay, your whole okay. list. That's okay. going to be a vault pre-entry campaign. And you can see that down here. Yes. Uh, so this pre-entry campaign, this is like your sales campaign for this vault. Because once somebody buys, you know, if somebody's on that campaign, if they no. purchase, we don't want them to get the messages anymore. That's right. So you, you connect it right here, right? Uh, right. And then that you can also have an entry campaign, which is a welcome, right? That's a, you know, hey, you're here. I'm so glad you're here, et cetera. Um, uh -huh. You obviously can, you know, you can, can attach automations here as well. Think, yeah, somebody told me to do this. <laughs> yeah, you, you could, you could yeah. use automations here and you can also attach your automations to the point of sale. So there, there's, there's a few different options just kind of depending on how you want to do it. Okay. And then is that, thing where it says reminders there in the vault is that where we would send like the day before it's so you know? no no that, oh. that would be so if you're wanting to create a campaign that kind of guides the experience to people who purchase that would be um that would be a separate campaign entirely that you could maybe apply at the point of purchase uh and that's going to be a date-based campaign that focuses on our first call is tomorrow and etc right. uh so that would be a, a different one completely uh but those um the reminders those are in-system messages that you can set up to send out to people. If say, for instance, they got into a vault where there's a class and they haven't engaged with it after a certain number of days, you can set up two of those. So after, oh, if okay. after seven days or 27 days or whatever that is, uh, then you can send an email. Okay. So I think I've been looking at that, um, the campaign things a, a little bit differently than what you described and so I would have a promotional campaign and then I would have the sort of reminders campaign. For That's right. Of other words. Yeah, because it's two different audiences, right? If somebody right. is on the promotional campaign, they don't get reminders until they purchase. So the, that campaign needs to trigger after they purchase. Right. And on the reminders campaign, would I, for that date up there, like specific date, I could maybe just put like the day 
before the thing is starting or like mm -hmm. anything like yeah, that? Yeah, what, what I'll typically do is I'll start the campaign two days before. Uh, that uh -huh. way I can send a day before message that says, hey, our first call's tomorrow. And then- okay. And then okay. the next one, that's our calls today. And you can play around with that, you know, between the, the campaign date numbers and of course the, the send date on the campaign. Okay. Okay. Very, very helpful. Thank you so much. Yeah. Glad we could help. All right. Thank you for your patience, Debbie. How can I help today? I hope that that's you, Debbie. <laughs> it just says Debbie uh, is signed up here for a um, for a review. So certainly let me know uh, if if that is not you. <laughs> you are not on the spot. Uh, but if you are is looking for help, I'm here to help. Me? Hi. Yes, I can hear you. Hi. Okay. Um, first of all, I just started with the whole attract well, and I could have possibly set it up wrong from the start. I'm certainly hoping not. Um, but I started with a page and okay. essentially a sales page and maybe I should have done it somewhere else, but I've put so much work into it. I don't necessarily want to want to move it. So I watched a ton of videos and I saw my, my whole thing today is about payment setup. Okay. So I saw, I think it's a jump to function that I'm not really clear about. So okay. what I'm envisioning, and the process might be wrong, but what I'm envisioning is on my page where it says, let's get started. Okay. That jumps to a page that I saw on a video where on the right-hand side, there was a full payment plan. I mean, a full payment and then a payment plan. On the left-hand side, there was text of whatever I want to put there. So for instance... I would put the details of the program. Do you, are you familiar with that page that I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, I, I, roughly, yeah. So what you will wanna do is add an additional page. And uh, what I would do, I don't wanna necessarily put in a whole sales page. I'm just gonna go blank here and put in two columns. Uh, and then I will put, let's see, here go, two column, no header. This is where um, left-hand side, this is everything you want to say about your program. This is essentially gonna be a checkout page. And over here is going to be a uh, form. And I'm gonna put that in brackets. And then I'm gonna to go to my page settings and under leads, it will show on the page since I used that form bracket there. Uh, and then under payments, we'll require payment. We'll use our Stripe, uh, I'll just, add some payment options here. So this is this is option one and our amount is $1 and here is option two and our amount is $2. If it is recurring, by the way, you will want to send them to a vault, uh, but that is a different, uh, like that's, that's a whole other thing, but this is the structure of the page and this is where you would wanna send them from that button on your homepage. Uh, we could take a look at what that looks like here where yeah. They put okay. in their information, option one, option two. Uh, and so we would just basically want to make this, This we'll call it our checkout page or offer checkout page. Okay. And uh, and once that's done and it's saved, then this is the link. So if we go to view and it looks like you have a domain, maybe potentially partially linked up. Uh, yeah, yeah, so you find <laughs> oh, Yeah, yes. I got to put together here. <laughs> that's okay. But, but this is the page that you would want to link to from that button at the bottom of this page. So when you're ready and the domain and everything is set up, essentially what you're going to be doing is going here and you're actually going to um, edit the link. And I'm going to copy this because it's going to populate with something different. Uh, but here we go. It's the offer checkout page. I'll repaste that copy. And so now if you were to click this, provided the page is published with the, the domain all worked out, which sounds like that's something you've got to work on with, with our team, but um, but this would now then go to that page um, that we were just working on. Okay, so a couple of questions about, so, so at this point, I do not have a vault, correct? I don't know, let's go see. Well, I haven't created one, so. Oh, well, then, then you don't. Then what you did with- Oh, no, vault. you do, it's right here. Oh, you have a vault. In it. Yeah. And it is okay. set up to take payment. So it looks like 
uh, pay in full or three month payment plan. Oh, is this maybe what you were thinking of? This well, is what this you would set up. But, but it's not correct and the price is all wrong and I couldn't figure out how to delete any of it. <laughs> well, so, so when, when you create these, uh, they are um, they don't go away, but you can make them unavailable. So okay. if we like these, um, if we make those available, uh, this is actually, I didn't realize you had this set up. So yeah, this, this is where this will show up on the left-hand side. And then these two options would show up on the right. And then they obviously would then be able to get access to the vault where your content is. Okay, so this is where I am get really fuzzy about everything. So there's a couple things, we'll just go one by one. The view on this, is it the same as the view that you showed me on the other page? That you uh, no, this will actually look a little bit different. And because there's something going on with your domain and it's not actually showing uh, the, um, it's, it's not actually showing published material. I can't show you what this looks like, okay. um, but uh, that is kind of what you're talking about. You've got the text on the left-hand side. You've got the checkout on the right-hand side. Uh, I will show you actually an example. Let me go back to the dashboard. And by the way, for everybody who's still here, this is still available. Our kickoff call is tomorrow, but here's generally what that's gonna look like. Here we go. So text, and even video if you want on the left-hand side and then mm -hmm. payment options over here on the right. This is obviously with your own branding and your own information, this, this is gonna be more or less what that looks like. Okay, so is there, in your experience, is either um, image preferred? Is there more, have you noticed that there's more sales with one particular page set up than the other? Um, it really kind of depends, uh, on, on the other sort of moving parts and pieces. Uh, mm -hmm. if what you're doing, so for, for us, for that page that I just showed you that checkout page, um, that is something that usually follows, like arriving at that link usually happens after you've been exposed to information that's kind of got you primed and pretty close to making a decision, right? And so that's yeah. a really great place to send somebody if that's the case. If I were paying for uh, for ad traffic, I would never send people to that page. I would send them to a page that mm -hmm. is much longer, like a website page that has a right. lot more information, like our sales page template. I would send to, like if I was gonna use traffic, I would do that. Or if it was more of a cold broadcast to a sales page or to a pitch, that's what I would do. Um, but if contextually somebody has visited or been exposed to other information that would prime them for, you know, that they're actually interested in saying yes, uh, then that's gonna be a perfectly good page to send them to. And functionally inside of Attract Well, if, one or more of your options for payment requires uh, multiple payments to be made. So whether that's a membership recurring or even just a multi-part payment plan, you do need to use the vault because that is okay. um, currently uh, the way that we're set up uh, to okay. take payments. Perfect, that's gonna work because I need the multi-payment. So my idea was to reach out individually to my list, set up a, uh, send them to that page that you see that I created where mm -hmm. they can read about it and then go to the calendar if they choose. Sign up, of course, if they choose, but go to the calendar or email, email me directly. Is that process, does that make sense to you or not? <laughs> yeah, I mean, so the thing is, um, whether it makes sense to me, so long as it actually connects to the outcomes and the sort of safety net that you need, then it does make sense. Your people are used to hearing from you in the way that you communicate from with them. And mm -hmm. so, um, you know, so you sending them to a page that sells something, but that also says, if you want to email me, click here. If you want to schedule a call, click here. There's That makes perfect sense, right? Okay. Uh, because these, yeah. again, these are people who are on your list. Would I create a, a sales page that has three options for people to potentially leave that page and not make a decision if I were, you know, sending something to a cold audience or buying traffic or something like that? Absolutely not. But to your list, it's fine. Okay. So it, it's it, there's there's not always like a, a clean one way to do it. <laughs> sure. Okay. So I'm um, unclear on the coupon portion of it. 
What I would like to do is not have, absolutely not have a coupon attached that applies every time somebody goes and checks out. Okay. I want to offer an incentivize people. If you purchase within 48 hours, use this coupon code and it will take off whatever the percentage is or dollar amount is that I've chosen. Mm. That requires the way that I see that you have it set up. It seems really difficult because it seems like I have to keep going in and changing the end date of the coupon for right. each person that I want to send that out to. Am I thinking about that correctly or is there something I'm missing? Yeah. So as of right now, filming this right now, we don't have, I don't think we have date-based expiration like coupon codes i don't think that that's something that we have set up just yet in our system i think it is on the wish list uh let's just go take a quick look um i i'm pretty sure that that's not something um that that we have the capability of offering at this point um if you want to offer a coupon code um and you're and you're doing a live promotion of something meaning there is a date that the cart closes, not an evergreen thing, 48 hours from now, what a, you know, whether it's now or three months from now, that evergreen, we don't have the functionality for. But if you're going to say now through January 17th, you can use this code. And that's true for everyone while you're running a live promotion, that works because then you can go in and remove that option on the 17th. Right. right. Um, no, I don't yeah. want to do it that way. I want to, I'm actually... I'm reaching out to individuals and my expectation is that I will have a actual interface. So on zoom with them and mm -hmm. after at the end, then offer them each individually. So it could be one day after another, after another, which we would require different dates. So is the answer to this, at least in the short term that I just have to go create at each time that I want to give and coupon to someone I have to go and create that coupon with the end date yeah so so what I would do and here, here's how I would make this really simple step one create a saved reply this is going to save you a bunch of time because you're going to email something to each person that you have a call with right I'm so sorry. I'm sorry I didn't hear you do a what a saved reply. So that's going to be in your content library. This is where you're going to kind of create the template email for what you'll send out to everybody. So this is invite with coupon code, um, invite with coupon code. Uh, and then what we'll do here is we will, um, let me see, what's the best way to do this? All right. So I'll say, um, something to the effect of, um, so excited to work with you. And then you talk about the program here and then tell them use code and we're going to put contact first name, have it be their name. I'm sorry. This, uh, so we're going to have it. So this code right here, contact first name, you'll also okay. find it over here. So it's going to be their name. It's going to oh, input perfect. their name. Okay? okay. So this is only good for the next 48 hours. Okay. Uh -huh. Right. So there's our saved reply. And you're obviously going to want to put more information into this about the program. So after you get off the call with that person, you're going to want to, and here I'm going to actually create a follow-up plan. Uh, and that's going to be under contact settings. And this is going to give you a to-do list for each of these people that you talk with. So for our follow-up plan, immediately we want to, and this is going to be invite to program with coupon code. All right. Uh -huh. So we're going to invite them to program with coupon code. So on day zero, we are going to send saved reply email to invite to purchase. We're also on day zero, going to create coupon code with customer, or sorry, with, with lead first name in Vault, okay? So these are your two steps. Mm -hmm. You have your call with them. You're gonna send them that email and it has their first name already in it, great. 
tells them it's good for 48 mm -hmm. hours. Cool. Um, and then you're going to um, create that coupon code, or maybe you do that first, but these are the first two things you do, right? On the same day, okay. coupon code in the mm -hmm. vault with a person's name, send them the email that tells them to go use their coupon code. And then 48 hours later, that's day two, we're going to uh, deactivate contact name, coupon code, and vault. There you go. And another thing that you could okay, do. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Another thing that you could do, and this would just make this a little bit more effective, is instead of just using the saved reply and just sending a single, a single email, you might create a campaign that follows up with them that says, hey, remember, sure. this is going to go bad tomorrow or whatever. You can't, you can yeah. only use this till tomorrow, uh, but you're going to get an <laughs> internal reminder in your system to go and, and deactivate. Perfect. Yeah. And perfect. so then what, what you'll do is if you create a campaign, then you could actually bundle that with this follow-up plan into a, a um, automation and just apply that to the contact. So we'll just, let's just pretend that that's what we're going to do. We're going to Get that done really quickly. Oops, campaigns, here we go. Um, this is going to be invite um, to a program. And obviously I wanna change these details uh, with coupon code. And then we're just basically going to send that first email that we already have in a saved reply. So I'll pop that right in, right? Uh, and mm -hmm. then we'll create another one uh, that's going to say, um, I don't know, this is going to be uh, code expires soon. And then you, you know, put that information in here. We'll put that back in here, code expires soon. And so what I'm going to do is uh, have this one go out. So it's going to go out immediately. This is 24 hours later. Uh, so maybe I want this to go out. Um, I'm gonna edit the the time. I want this to I want this to go out on day two. So that is the second day, but I want it to go out at 9 a.m. right? East uh, that would be 9 a.m. Central time. Uh, or if you want this to go out on day one at 5 p.m., hey, your code expires tomorrow, right? Depending on how you set this up, uh, then based on whenever this this campaign was applied to them, they're going to be told what their coupon code is because it's their first name. Uh, and they're going to be getting a reminder that, hey, this expires soon. So the final thing that we would do is to create an automation. And that automation is going to apply the follow-up plan and it's going to um, apply that campaign. And so then all you have to do is after you get on a call with somebody and you make the offer, you're just going to apply this automation to the contact, does both things, you're reminded to remove that coupon code and uh, and you're good to go. So you will need to get in every day or two to just deactivate the coupon code, but that would be basically it. So invite to program with coupon code. And then we would add that follow-up plan and the campaign. There we go. So the automation is done. And so, you know, here is you and your contacts. We had a call, you're excited to offer this to, to this person. And so we're gonna go and run an automation here. There it is. And when we run it, you're going to be receiving uh, those emails, right? And uh, and then you will also, you've got this to-do list, right? So um, this I've already done. I need to go create a coupon code. Uh, and then in a couple of days, you're gonna be reminded to deactivate that coupon code. So if we go over to your vault, to your payment options to complete this step, then we would create, and what is the, let me see. Uh, and the coupon code would be Debbie. And then you put in whatever the payment is, right? So um, whatever the, the discount is that they get, uh, then- So is it only dollar or can you do per percentage as well? Uh, you would just want to calculate that and then put in okay. whatever that total is here. So if I'm doing, um, is it possible that if I, let's just say that somebody wanted to do the payment plan version and, 
I was willing to give them a coupon on a payment plan. If I gave them a coupon, would it apply automatically to all of the payments or would it apply only to the first one? And then when I deactivated it, it wouldn't apply it anymore. And it would go through as the original amount. Yeah, so it, that's your choice. Uh, when you're setting up a recurring payment plan, you get to choose what the initial payment is and what the ongoing payments are. Okay. So um, okay. so yeah, you can, you can choose if it's recurring payments um, and you can adjust the first price. If you wanna take a certain amount off the first month, then you could do that Got with it. this one right here. Uh, but, but yeah, essentially you're just going to create a special plan for that person. And then you're just going to go in and deactivate it when you get that reminder. Okay. Can you pull up anything? I don't, whether it's mine or someone else's where there's a payment, because I'm, my question, I have a question around this. I saw, um, at least on the vid, on the videos that I watched, what I thought I saw was there was a coupon code that was in within, so it would have the name uh whatever the program is and then the amount and then a space for the coupon do i have to input each coupon in there or how does it recognize the coupon okay um i think i might be able to i don't remember if we have an active coupon on the impact amplifier to show you oh yeah no so um if you have the right one it'll display the new price but you'll actually see so here's the price and nothing else gets revealed unless you enter a coupon code here so if this was yours and and the word debbie was put in here then that new payment option would show up yeah i'm sorry i didn't articulate that well i was talking behind the scenes when i'm setting up the payment mm -hmm. and i'm setting up so i have a payment plan and mm -hmm. then I have a coupon that I create. Do mm -hmm. I have to put, so if I'm making multiple, you know, as I stated, let's say I have five people that I have, I'm making this offer to. So mm -hmm. I have one coupon with Debbie, one coupon with Mary, one coupon with Jen, et cetera, et cetera. Do I then plug each of those coupons into the master pay in full amount for it to recognize each of them? Oh, no, no. All you would be doing is creating a plan. So again, if we were to do, uh, this one is Debbie. Uh, this is, is an initial payment. Uh, if you're $497, uh, one time, maybe you're saying you'll give it to him for $397. Um, the coupon code is the word um, Debbie, right? And, uh, and so see. any of the tags or automations you want to include, but when you add that plan, you can see Debbie here is the coupon code. But when you get that reminder in 48 hours, you're just going to come over here and you're going to uncheck this and save it because then nobody can use that coupon code. If this is checked, anybody could use the Debbie coupon code. If this is unchecked, Got the system it. isn't going to recognize it. Okay. So it's not about the coupon itself. It's about the plan you create. That's right. You can, you can create a coupon for oh. a payment option. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Okay. Two, a couple other things. Vault. Is there a way to drip information that you haven't evolved? Yes. Can you tell me more about kind of what you're planning so, to offer? Let's just say I have, I have, which will be happening soon after I figured this whole thing out, 20 things that I'm going to upload into my vault for this, let's say. Okay. But I don't want someone to have access to the vault and access to everything. I only want them to have access sequentially in a drip mode weekly. Yeah. How can I do that for them? Yeah, that's uh, so you're going to set that up in your online class. Uh, so that's going to be uh, over here under classes. When you create your class, you can actually choose. Um, you can choose the how they unlock. So it could be that they have to complete one to, to complete the next. But what you're saying is you want the to, them to be able to access one per week. So uh, here, right. I'll save this real quick. So this would be uh, my class. And I'll create it. And then, uh, yeah, we'll just, uh, we'll add a lesson. And this is day one, day two, et cetera. So this is, uh, I'll say week one. And we'll do a week two and a week three. And I'll show you how that works. So is this in the vault? I'm, I'm, I'm maybe. It's not in the I'm vault. Wrong. It's no, it's, it's not, not in the vault me. yet. I've just created an online class. Okay. And we do, by the way, we have a complete uh, course on this that you could follow step by step. But it's just for the, for the sake of showing you, uh, this is the okay. online class. Uh, after a number of days, week one's available immediately. Uh, but maybe week two is available after seven days. 
and oh, week three is available nice. after 14 days. Okay. So you could set it up that way. And if this is something that's date specific that everyone's doing together, it's not evergreen. You could also decide for these things to unlock on calendar dates as well. So am I always going to want to have uh, the vault say for any kind of payment plan? Well, I always want the vault to say must pay for access. I'm always going to click that. Uh, if the content that's going to be in it will be sold, uh, then, then yes. Uh, and it also depends, right? Like you don't always have to use a vault checkout page to take payment. You could have somebody, uh, get access to a vault by using a sales page. So in that case, you don't have to set up payment options on a vault. It's just only something that people would have access to after they've purchased on a sales page. Okay. And the last thing, what if I wanted to give somebody free access would I just create a zero dollar payment plan? No, nope, you actually don't need to do that at all. You can, I mean, you you can create, um, you can create if you want it to be automated. You can have something that they fill out, like a page or a landing page that adds them to the vault, and you there will be an option that shows like I want them to bypass payment, uh, or you could add them manually. And when you add someone to a vault, it will ask you whether or not. Uh, you want to bypass payment for that. Oh, perfect. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, absolutely. You know, I purchased this real quick. I purchased this when you had your special going with all the bells and whistles. What are the credits for? Like, what are the, you know, what can I get with the, all these credits that I- the Marketing have? credits. Yeah. Yeah, marketing credits are essentially internal currency for communication. So if you're broadcasting emails or SMS or MMS messages, that's text or, or multi, you know, like images and text, um, then uh, you're going to use a certain amount of those per text. So if you actually go to the um, right here and you type in marketing credits, you can learn more about okay. how each of them work uh, specifically. And that does kind of change based on the market that you're in. So definitely take a look at that. So then am I misunderstanding what you're saying? If I have upload my, my contacts and I want to send them a blast um, for an offer, that's mm -hmm. going to cost me something outside of what I pay for the monthly no. Nope. Nope. That is what your marketing credits are. So when you got started uh, and, and ongoing, you have a certain number of marketing credits that comes with your plan per month, plus whatever the bonuses are that you're getting on a monthly basis. Uh, and uh, and so let's just say, for instance, you have, and you can look at this on the AttractWell uh, website where you look at the different plan levels. Based on okay. your plan level, there's a certain number of marketing credits that come with your account every month. Most people don't run out of them, but you can purchase okay. more if you happen to be really heavily promoting. Um, and, you're, and they do roll over several months as well. So most people don't need to purchase additional marketing credits. Uh, if you have a very large list and you are, you know, you're sending a ton of emails this month for a particular promotion to the whole list, then you might find yourself in a position where you might need to top up your credits. But again, it's, okay. it's not the most common need. Okay, great. Thank you, Ashley. I appreciate it. Sure thing. All right. Thank you guys for sticking around. All of you curious people <laughs> sticking around for an extra 23 minutes on the call. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, and uh, let me see if there were any questions here. Um, the recording will go out later today, Cindy. Um, what I shared with you, I, there was something that we showed uh, in pages. And then the other option was a, a vault checkout page. Uh, we don't have a support phone number for AttractWell, but if you send an email to support at attractwell.com, uh, then you let our team know what it is that you're looking for help with. Quite often, they can pretty quickly uh, get you onto a call uh, with someone. And that's usually going to be via Zoom just because our team uh, is international. So, um, so yeah, just reach out to our to our support team, and they can uh, they can help connect you with what you need. Uh, thank you guys for being here. Excited to see you. And if you have joined uh, the um, this amazing group that will be launching with our kickoff call tomorrow, I'm so excited to see you there. That's going to be right over here, Impact Amplifier Academy. If you haven't checked it out yet, there is still time for you to check it out and hop in and get started. We're going to be working together for six weeks and you will have ongoing access uh, to a lot of really great material to help you grow your business. So I uh, hope to see you there and I'll see you all next week here. Take care, everybody.